unjust sanctions as manifestation of structural violence are intrinsically inhumane and against peace. And contrary to the claims of those who pursue and impose them, it is not the state and the political elite that are targeted, but rather it is the common people who are victimized by these sanctions. Let us not forget millions of Iraqis who, as a result of sanctions covered in international legal jargon, suffered and lost their lives and many more who continue to suffer all through their lives. These sanctions are violent, pure and simple, whether called smart or otherwise, unilateral or multilateral. These sanctions violate inalienable human rights, Australia, the right to the peace, right to development, right to access to health and education and above all, the right to life. Sanctions beyond any and all rhetoric cause belligerents warmongering and human suffering. It should be borne in mind, however, that the negative impact is not merely limited to the intended victims of sanctions. It also affects the economy and livelihood of other countries and societies, including the countries imposing sanctions. Mr. President, Excellencies, violence and extremism nowadays have gone beyond the physical realm and have unfortunately afflicted and tarnished the mental and spiritual dimensions of life in human societies. Violence and extremism leave no space for understanding and moderation as the necessary foundations of collective life of human beings and the modern society. Intolerance is the predicament of our time. We need to promote and reinforce tolerance in light of the religious teachings and appropriate cultural and political approaches. The human society should be elevated from the state of mere tolerance to that of collective collaboration. We should not just tolerate others. We should rise above mere tolerance and dare to work together. People all over the world are tired of war, violence, and extremism. They hope for a change in the status quo. And this is a unique opportunity for us all. The Islamic Republic of Iran believes that all challenges can be managed successfully through a smart, judicial vicious blend of hope and moderation. Warmongers are bent on extinguishing all hope. But hope for change, for the better, is an innate, religious, widespread, and universal concept. Hope is founded on the belief in the universal will of the people across the globe to combat violence and extremism, to cherish change, to oppose imposed structures, to value choice, and to act in accordance with human responsibility. Hope is, no doubt, one of the greatest gifts bestowed upon human beings by their all-loving creator. And the moderation is to think and move in a wise, judicious manner, conscious of the time and the space and to align exalted ideals with choice of effective strategies and policies while cognizant of objective realities. The Iranian people in a judiciously sober choice in the recent elections voted for the discourse of hope, foresight and prudent moderation, both at home and abroad. In foreign policy, the combination of these elements means that the Islamic Republic of Iran as a regional power will act responsibly with regard to regional and international security and is willing and prepared to cooperate in these fields bilaterally as well as multilaterally with other responsible actors. We defend peace based on democracy and the ballot box everywhere, including in Syria, Bahrain, and other countries in the region, and believe that there are no violent solutions to world crisis. The bitter and ugly realities of the human society can only be overcome through recourse to and reliance on human wisdom, interaction, and moderation, securing peace and democracy and ensuring the legitimate rights of all countries in the world, including the Middle East, cannot and will not be realized through militarism. Iran seeks to resolve problems, not to create them. There is no issue or dossier that cannot be resolved through reliance on hope and prudent moderation, mutual respect, and rejection of violence and extremism. Iran's nuclear dossier is a case in point. As clearly stated by the leader of the Islamic Republic of Iran, acceptance of the inalienable right of Iran constitutes the best and the easiest way of resolving this issue. This is not political rhetoric. Rather, it is based on a profound recognition of the state of technology in Iran, global political environment, and the end of the era of zero-sum games, and the imperative of seeking common objectives and interests toward reaching common understanding and shared security. 
Put otherwise, Iran and other actors should pursue two common objectives as two mutually inseparable parts of a political solution for the nuclear dossier of Iran. One, Iran's nuclear program, and for the matter that of all other countries must pursue exclusively peaceful purposes. I declare here openly and unambiguously that notwithstanding the positions of others, this has been and will always be the objective of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Nuclear weapon and other weapons of mass destruction have no place in Iran's security and defense doctrine and contradict our fundamental religious and ethical convictions. Our national interests make it imperative that we remove any and all reasonable concerns about Iran's peaceful nuclear program. Two, the second objective, that is, acceptance of and respect for the implementation of the right to the enrichment inside Iran and enjoyment of other related nuclear rights, provides the only path toward achieving the first objective. Nuclear knowledge in Iran has been domesticated now, and the nuclear technology, inclusive of enrichment, has already reached industrial scale. It is, therefore, an illusion and extremely unrealistic to pursue that the peaceful nature of the nuclear program of Iran could be ensured through embedding the program via illegitimate pressures. In this context, the Islamic Republic of Iran insisting on the implementation of its rights and the imperative of international respect and cooperation in this exercise is prepared to engage immediately in time-bound and result-oriented talks to build mutual confidence and removal of mutual uncertainties with full transparency. Iran seeks constructive engagement with other countries based on mutual respect and common interests and within the same framework work does not seek to increase tensions with the United States. I listened carefully to the statement made by President Obama today at the General Assembly, commensurate with the political will of the leadership in the United States and hoping that they will refrain from following the short-sighted interests of war-mongering pressure groups. We can arrive at a framework to manage our differences. To this end, equal footing, mutual respect, and the recognized principles of international law should govern the interactions. Of course, we expect to hear a consistent voice from Washington. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, in recent years, a dominant voice has been repeatedly heard. The military option is on the table. Against the backdrop of this illegal and ineffective contention, let me say loud and clear that peace is within which. So, in the name of the Islamic Republic of Iran, I propose, as a starting step, the consideration by the United Nations of the project The World Against Violence and Extremism. Let us all join this wave. I invite all states, international organizations, and civil institutions to undertake a new effort to guide the world in this direction. We should start thinking about coalition for enduring peace all across the globe instead of the ineffective coalitions for war in various parts of the world. Today, the Islamic Republic of Iran invites you and the entire world community to take a step forward, an invitation to join the wave. World Against Violence and Extremism. We should accept and be able to open a new horizon in which peace will prevail over war, tolerance over violence, progress over bloodletting, justice over discrimination, prosperity over poverty, and freedom over despotism. As beautifully said by Ferdowsi, the renowned Iranian epic poet, be relentless in striving for the cause of good. Bring the spring, you must. Banish the winter, you should. Notwithstanding all difficulties and challenges, I'm deeply optimistic about the future. I have no doubt that the future will be bright with the entire world solidly rejecting violence and extremism. Prudent moderation will ensure a bright future for the world. My hope, aside from personal and national experience, emanates from the belief shared by all divine religions that a good and bright future awaits the world as stated in the Holy Quran and we proclaimed in the Psalms after we had proclaimed in the Torah that my virtuous servants will inherit the earth. Thank you Mr. President. The media didn't give his speech fair coverage. Share this video. Just use these YouTube tools. Don't make a copy. Just use the tools below.